Hello and welcome to the first ever Quick Sex. Uh, we got to first start off by thanking you patrons for making this happen. This was a stretch goal, and you guys, you guys hit the goal. So once a month, one of us will be tackling a concept from the Cosmere that maybe is just a little too, uh, a little too short, or just there's not enough meat on the bone for a full episode, or maybe it's just a pet topic that uh, we don't think the other hosts would be interested in. Uh, regardless, I want to discuss today green. At any one moment, I'm probably thinking about like Gravity Falls, Ghostbusters, Super Smash Brothers, or uh, Mistborn. Those are about the the four points on my entertainment compass. I I think. Um, and Reen is just absolutely fascinating to me. One, we we never see him. He is told entirely from Vin's perspective. That's interesting. Um, it's not often we get a character without any sort of reference in Brandon's universe. We tend to, you know, tend to get a viewpoint or two, or at least see them. Uh, but Reen, someone who has a deep effect on the plot of the story, is someone we never meet. He is gone before the story even starts. And the picture we get of him is not very flattering. Not very flattering at all. Um, to say Reen is not brother of the year material, I think, is a little bit of an understatement. Uh, bluntly, he beat Bean. Bean. This isn't Ender's game. He beat Vin. Bean. What's going on? Anyway, he beat Vin. And now he did so under the auspices of trying to teach her how to actually survive in the streets. But still, you know, it's not not something speaking as the older brother. <laughs> in my family, uh, it's, not, it's not typically smiled upon to uh, beat your little sisters. Not at all. Uh, on top of that, he constantly, mentally, uh, like at the very minimum, you say, stressed her, always talking about how he would eventually leave her. These aren't good traits to have. They're bad. But then we pull the camera back on him a little bit. And we look at him from the perspective of what he was brought up in. Uh, obviously, no father figure whatsoever. His mother uh, was apparently so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that Ruin could whisper to her. And whisper to her so completely that she would murder her infant. And yeah, that's with an earring. That's uh, <laughs> not exactly an ideal situation to be raised in. Imagine you're Reen, and you're not in a good situation already, and then you come home and you see your kid sister in, you know, bloody in your mother, your mother's lap, who's rambling about her being a queen, and your infant sister uh, dead on the floor. You think he's a little bit scarred? I think he's a little bit scarred to see his own mother, uh, like... I'm willing to bet he knew his mother wasn't stable. You know, you, you know these things. But I'm willing to bet he didn't think she was that unstable. How upsetting that would be. And how old could he have been when that occurred? I would guess, just look, I, I tried to, to nail this with the, uh, with the book series itself. And found out that uh, he was about... I, I'm estimating around Vin's age when she started her adventures with uh, Kelsey and his crew. So that put him around, what, 14? Imagine being 14, 15, 16 years old and suddenly knowing that you have to take and run away with your sister. And you now have to survive on in the, in the undercity of, of Luthadel and, and the rest of in the final empire. With this little girl. And then on top of it, you don't have the best role models. Uh, we already covered the fact that his mother was. Uh, and he's living in the underground. I'm willing to bet he got beat a lot himself. Um, there was a. I was always fascinated um, by studies on this, the cycle of abuse that happens, where. People who are abusers tend to have been abused. And, you know, this is a heavy topic. And 
you know, Reen's definitely guilty of probably passing on his pain to Vin. It's what makes part of Vin's story so heartwarming is the fact that she moves past this abuse and that she rises above it and she breaks the cycle. But part of what makes it so interesting is the fact that he did this himself. He was a, he was a liar. But what makes this so interesting is the fact that we find out that despite everything Vin thought, Reen did love her and, and loved her as, as well as he could. Brandon has a constant theme going on with his uh, books, a concept of constant improvement, of trying to make the best of a bad situation. And, and Reen, I think, is guilt, not guilt, well, guilty, yes, obviously. But I think this is something Reen falls into. He is a very flawed individual from a very difficult circumstance. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I do think he's honestly trying to do his best to do good by his sister overall, but he can't even begin to understand what that is. He is a broken person. Because one of the big plot reveals of, of Mistborn the Final Empire was when Vin gets captured, and this is after, uh, after Kelsier has already passed on and she's she's you know decided she's going to try and save the day and she ends up getting captured by the steel inquisitors and she's been taken before the lord ruler and one of the steel inquisitors tells her that her brother didn't abandon her that he was being tortured and he kept swearing up and down that vin had starved I always find uh, the conversation of who are you really as a person to be an interesting one. The, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways people and philosophers theorize, you know, you can determine who someone really is. But the one that I've always, that's always struck the truest to me is what do you do when no one's watching you? That's who you really are. When you think no one's watching, I should say. And at this point, Reen. He's not, he knows he's not going to see his sister again. He's been on the run from the Steel Inquisitors for, for years at this point. The fact that he's been able to avoid them for this long shows how incredibly competent Reen actually was as a character. And you can see why Vin herself, being so paranoid, she definitely has been... She's taken those lessons from Reen, maybe a little too well. We see her have to overcome that. But part of her competency comes from being trained by him. And he's, he's very good at avoiding things. Well, he, uh, he was being tortured. Vin, Vin couldn't do anything for him anymore. He's certainly not there trying to impress the Steel Inquisitor. He's being tortured. In most situations like that, you'll tell them whatever they want to hear. Not Reen. Reen, in the end, did not abandon her. That is such a tragically beautiful, or beautifully tragic, I don't know, one of those, moment in, in the story. Then finding out that Reen had been a liar all along. And that he had never abandoned her, that he did love her. In his incredibly flawed way, and, you know, this shouldn't excuse the abuse that he, he put her through. But it does soften it. It makes it, it puts his character in a much different light. And it's 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 so beautiful. The I keep saying beautiful. Like it's just there's such a humanity to that. That this there and Brandon's so good at capturing these incredibly flawed people who have done horrible things but are trying to make the best of the situation. Um Dalinar being the I think best character, Dalinar is guilty of heinous war crimes, much worse than, uh, you know, beating his sister. Um, yet he's the hero of, you know, one of the heroes of the story of the Stormlight Archive because he's trying. Elicar, he's trying. Uh, this is just a theme in Brandon's stories that no matter what your situation is, try. 
Try to make the world a better place. Try to do the right thing. Try to improve. What's the most important step? The next one. And I just think Reen captures that spectacularly. Despite his horrible flaws, he was trying. And you can, you can't excuse some of the horrible things he did, but you can at least understand how that would happen. You can understand that it's at the very minimum you would agree that uh, it's not, it's not the ideal. You know, being 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 born to a to an absolutely insane mother who murders your baby sister in the middle of the final empire and you're being chased by inquisitors your entire life and you're always on the run in the criminal underground. Not an ideal situation, not an ideal situation. And so you can see how he would become the way he is. And the fact that he would rise above that to become something just a little bit better. I think that's, that's amazing. I think it's real amazing. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for, uh, again, sponsoring us and making making the quick six happen. We'll be doing this every single month on the last uh, the last week of every single month that we don't have an episode. So it's not the most eloquent way of putting it. I'm pretty sure Bill wrote down a much better way to say it. But unfortunately, you got me to start. Um, you can always find me on twitch.tv slash splice stream. I highly encourage you to come visit. I think you will enjoy the content. I've been doing a lot of uh, humans versus machines content, either in Smash Brothers or Team Fortress 2. So if you like that, you should, or at least at the very minimum, think it's interesting. You should come lurk. At the very minimum, it helps me out. And isn't that what you really want to do? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, this has uh, been the Quick Six. And remember, there's always another secret.